Howdy booktube, Nikki here and I am back with a brand new setup and TBR for the upcoming booktubeathon. Took a bit of a mid-year break to refresh, rejuvenate, really watch a lot of Netflix series, but I sorted out my shelves and my life. So I'm hoping to be making more videos more frequently on a regular schedule that I will figure out at some point in the future. Catch that non-committal phrasing there. But Booktubeathon is happening and I'm really excited. I feel like this year the one thing that I haven't done other than like make videos is readathons. I haven't been taking part in as many readathons as I would like. Booktubeathon I believe is starting on the 24th of July and I think it goes to the 30th. That's seven days, right? Yeah, maths. Uh. I'll link that channel below in the description for your perusal should you want to take part in Booktubeathon. Now there are seven challenges. You don't have to do all of them or any of them, but I'm going to try and do all of them and probably fail miserably. Except I won't be miserable because I'll be reading. I will be super surprised if I complete all seven. However, I have set seven books for myself. I'm gonna share them with you now. Let's roll with the punches. No punching, please. Punching is rude. The first challenge that I can remember because I didn't write them down is a book with a person on the cover. And for that, I've chosen The Austere Academy, book number five in the A Series of Unfortunate Events series. Redundancy school, redundancy school. Four score and seven years ago, I started reading this series. I don't even know how many years that is. It's four score and seven years. I started reading this series like yonks ago and then I just never finished it. I got to the fourth book, which is where the Netflix series gets up to, I believe. And then I started watching the Netflix series, but I was like, no, I want to read the whole series before I watch any of this. I got to earn it, baby. And then I didn't earn it. I haven't earned it. I've earned nothing. There's some peeps on the cover. There's this unsavory fellow. And then there's the orphans. So there's lots of people on this cover. Done. The second challenge is a book that you bought because of the hype or a book that had lots of hype or something about hype. And for that one, I picked Nerve by G. Ryan. Is that right? Yes, it is. I didn't even look. I didn't even look. I didn't even. I'm such a professional. I think a lot of the hype for this came around the time of the movie because this is a movie. It's a movie cover. There wasn't another cover to buy and this was a bit of an impulse buy to be honest because I was influenced by my peers and I don't think I've heard many people talk about this book post reading it. It's all been, oh that sounds like a cool movie. So I bought the book. Hype is real. What was that? Something made a sound. Oh my goodness. But this was a movie with Emma Roberts and one of the Francos. I think it's Dave, right? There's James and there's Dave. And there's probably, are there other Francos? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't delved into the Franco family tree. The third book had lots of hype around it as well. And this is for the challenge to read a book in a day. And that is Faith by Jodie Hauser. And I didn't read the names before I held up the book. Francis Portella. Marguerite Sauvage. Yes. Andrew Dalhouse. This is a comic about a superhero named Faith. She is lovely. Look at her there. Look at the back. of all the reviews. All good in the hood. Homie G. So I'm pumped for this one and I reckon I can smash it out in a day. Meeting the third challenge. Fourth challenge is to read about a character who is different from you. Something to that effect. For that one I have chosen Ultimate Comic Spider-Man Volume 4. This follows a black Hispanic character named Miles Morales who gets bitten by the spider and becomes Spider-Man in the Ultimate Universe. This is written by Mario Michael Bendis and illustrated by Sarah Pacelli and it's awesome. Well, the first three were. This is number four, which is what I'm up to. There's actually some references to him in Spider-Man Homecoming, and I was like, in the cinema, like, ee! So the fifth challenge is to read a book completely outdoors, which is all fine and great for you peeps over in the other side of the planet where it's not winter, okay, where it's nice summer, you go out, you see the trees and the sun and the stuff, but it's winter in Australia and Australians don't really deal with winter. We sort of just endure winter to get to a normal temperature, which is generally like the temperature of the face of the sun. We're far greater equipped to deal with that than to deal with the cold. So we don't really go outside in winter and I, I'm not about to go outside and sit outside and read a book in the freaking cold. <sighs> it's not what I'm about. So I've extended this challenge to outside my house and I'm going to read this book on my commute on the bus which is technically traveling outside on a road. What? And for that one I've chosen yes another comic book Archie volume three. This is by Mark Wade and Joe Eismer who did Morning Glories which is another comic series that I've read. I didn't finish it ever but I should. This is the Archie comic book reboot. It's not really anything like Riverdale. Riverdale is sort of a different interpretation but this is really fun, kitschy, great 
great, colourful, carefree, perfect for a commute, so I've chosen this one. The sixth challenge is a book that you bought for the cover, and for that one, I've chosen half the- oh my, every time, every time I hold this book up the wrong way. <sighs> I've chosen Half Bad by Sally Green. I definitely bought this as a cover by, because as I've said before, I think when I hauled this a million years ago, I thought that it was about werewolves. I don't know where I got that from, or why that would even draw me to a book. I'm not that into werewolves in the first place. And I can't even tell you what it's about because I don't know. I swear I've looked this up since and gone, oh, that's what this book is about. I've forgotten. And the final challenge is to read seven books. That was six. And if I do finish all of those, which I don't think will happen, I will throw in my seventh book, which is Animorphs, 30 Eight, the Arrival. This is a series that I read as a child in the 90s. I don't ever think I read it in order completely. And I am now one book short of owning the entire series. So if anyone has book 51 floating around for less than $70, which someone's trying to charge on eBay, I always like to throw one of these in a readathon because I am trying to get through them all. There's 54 numbered books and then there's 10 other books. So there's 64 books altogether. But I find these really good to throw in the middle of a readathon because you can bust this out in like less than an hour. And then you're like, yeah. I'm the best. Who's the best? I'm the best. Oh, and you feel a little motivated, like, read all the books. <sighs> That's what I'm reading for Booktubeathon. What are you reading for Booktubeathon? Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna go and cancel all of my plans for that week of my life, but I will see you next time. In the meantime, feel free to like this video if you like it, and subscribe if you wanna see more of my face, and the more of my books, and the more of the faces on my books. Also, let me know what you think of my new setup. Does this work? Is it pleasing to your eyeballs? That was a weird way to phrase that question. Cool, I'm gonna go. This got weird. <gasps> oh, a sword. Thank you.